because that implies that the West in itself, if Israel falls, the West is next. Well, I, I mean, so I don't know what's a checkmate, honestly, because uh, Western audiences have been poisoned for decades, and you're seeing the effects of that now. So uh, what you're seeing all over the world, which is very worrisome all over the West, is a consequence of two things. One is uh, immigration of radical Muslims into the West. Uh, many of the people protesting in Western cities are radical Muslims, uh, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are people who've been poisoned by woke. Uh, and I saw woke happening when when I was teaching, at, when I was getting my PhD at UCLA, I, I this was already beginning to happen in a big way. Um, it wasn't as bad as it's now, of course. I mean, the, the, the rot in our university system has only continued to grow uh, in, in, in the last half century. But, but um, I saw all of this happen uh, and how p people were indoctrinated in these social science courses, grievance studies that they invented uh, to convince people that the proper way to advance what they call social justice was for everybody to be at each other's throats, right? So this this is what they they did. They splintered, they splintered the citizenry into smaller and smaller identities, uh, and each identity was defined by its special grievance against the power structure and so forth. So instead of uniting us, the people who pushed woke. Uh, have been dividing us into smaller and smaller tribes, all of them violently against each other. Um, and, of course, that's useful to the power elite, right? The, the, the divide and conquer strategy is very useful to the power elite. But woke has been very bad for us. And some elements of woke are truly poisonous. It, they, they make people unable to process moral questions. So, so now we see people demonstrating in favor of Hamas? How is that possible? Hamas is not shy about its, about its goals. The, the constitution of Hamas, the, the, what they call the Hamas Covenant, the Hamas Covenant, uh, is quite clear. Uh, there's, there's no ambiguity in that document. They, they say that they're fighting infidels. They're, they don't say they're fighting oppression. They're fighting infidels. It's a religious holy war. It's a jihad. Um, and uh, it's not just against the Jews in Israel. Uh, it, the, the jihad is a general one. It's just that they're in the Middle East and the Jews are right next to them and they're going to start with the Jews. But the, the program is, is, won't end there. Uh, they're very clear about that. Uh, so this movement, which is anti-Western, which w wants to uh, uh, murder and enslave infidels, uh, is being defended by by the first people those infidels are going to kill uh, those uh, Muslims are going to kill uh, if if they ever uh, have more power right if 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 Hamas were to take over the United States government the first people they were they they're going to get rid of is uh, all these LGBTQ activists uh, uh, who who are are uh, demonstrating in, in favor of Hamas those, those are the first people to go we 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 have no beef against them gender identity who cares the West transcended that a long time ago they they're they're pretending that we haven't right they they have to keep inventing these fake prejudices that we supposedly still have we don't Westerners are very tolerant about that stuff the the people who are 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 going to be uh, terribly intolerant are these people they're now defending. So this is evidence of woke sort of destroying the ability to think critically. And that happened in the universities. Now, when the universities are destroying the ability of people to think critically, you know that something very evil has taken over the system because the university is the place where you're supposed to be learning how to think, how to apply critical thinking, how to do science, how to separate myth from fact, uh, how to uh, compare hypotheses against each other so that you can improve your models of the universe. That's what a university is supposed to be doing. But what the universities have been doing is they have been teaching people that politics is reality. That whatever your politics are, and, and, and you have to have the right politics, because if you don't have the right politics, you cannot be tolerated, right? The university is supposed to be the place where all different viewpoints are tolerated so that we can all learn from each other, so that we can find errors in our models uh, by challenging each other, right? 
that's what a university is supposed to do. But what they've been doing for a half century is uh, telling people that the only thing that matters is your political position and the only political position acceptable is the moral position and the only moral uh, position acceptable is the one that woke people are defending. Well, that sounds a lot like Islam, right? Islam is in structural terms, maybe not in content, but in structural terms, is the, the core of Islam is you're only a good person if you agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, I'll kill you. That's Orthodox Islam. That's what the Quran says. The, the, uh, your viewers shouldn't believe people telling them that uh, uh, radical Islam is somehow contradicting the Quran. It's not. The Quran is page after page after page of, of, of a crazy obsession with infidels and how to punish infidels. Right. So it, it's not true that radical Islam is, is somehow a, a it's ortho, radical Islam is orthodox Islam. This, this, the people should understand that. Uh, and which is not to say that the uh, you have to we, we have to make these these uh, 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 caveats. Uh, it's not to say that there aren't lots of good Muslims out there. there. Of course, that's true. There are many good Muslims. And 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 m m some of these Muslims have been bravely defending Israel. I've seen some v videos going around by by Muslims uh, defending the Palestinians from the oppression of Hamas and defending the Jews from the attacks of Hamas and saying the only way the Palestinians are ever going to be free is if Hamas and Peel of Fatah, by the way, are completely uh, uh, defeated. And, and they're right, and, and there are may, many good Muslims, but, the, but the, the thing that people must understand in the West is that a, 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 when a Muslim is a good person, they're bad Muslims. So they're good people. There are many Muslims that are good people, but that makes them bad Muslims because the Quran doesn't want them to be good people. The, the Quran does preach holy war against infidels. It's all in there. And people shouldn't believe Western academics who say otherwise. They should go read the Quran. That's what critical thinking is. Critical thinking is not, oh, I'll see what the expert says and whatever the expert says, especially if it's the expert that the right people chose for me, right? Then I'll believe him or her. That's not critical thinking. Critical thinking is whatever Francisco said, I'm not going to believe it. I don't want anybody to believe me. I want people to do critical thinking. Critical thinking is Francisco said something, I don't buy it. I'm going to go check it. That's critical thinking. So when, when, when academic... When Western academics say that Islam is the relig uh, you know, the religion of peace and bullshit, 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 people should go read the Quran. That's the first thing they should do. Yeah. Go read the Quran. See if see if the apologies that are being published and and uh, spread by Western academics and the media about the supposed peace of Islam uh, have anything to do with what is written in the Quran and the Hadiths. Go read it, Francisco. I don't. I don't think. I have to underline and stress it out because I don't think that it's not being said. It's not being said enough and stressed enough and underlined enough that I think the underlying message here that that you're saying that you're expressing here in a way it's of course you know a brief a brief parenthesis. But I saw a video of an LGBTQ member who transitioned from I think from man to woman but just you, it, I'll show you the video I'll put the video on the link but so what we call a trans woman now yeah and 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 yeah. and, and he was or she was strongly defending uh, Hamas and the Palestinian movement and people were commenting okay go to Gaza right now and see if, how how they'll host you wouldn't last a second wouldn't last a second in Gaza and, and that's that's the important thing and and the important thing here is that like you say the it's all mediated from from the media and 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 this reality, this postmodern reality where we are, where these, these connections happen, where Hamas is not affiliated in any way whatsoever in freedom rights. And if Nothing. You wanna, if you want to do the, the, the comparison, most people from the LGBTQ community would say, I would strongly support Israel because Tel Aviv is one of the most uh, friend, gay-friendly cities in the world. Of course. That's Look, we, we are so tolerant about gender diversity in the West. So yeah. tolerant. And, that and, we have been letting we have been letting the gender activists bully us for a long time. Yeah. It, in Gaza, they wouldn't be able to bully anyone. The only place where they can bully uh, so-called conservatives and 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 uh, what they think what they keep calling the extreme right, which of course <laughs> we, we're, we the the people who oppose woke the the great majority of the people who oppose woke and I count myself among them. We're simply defending 
traditional Western democracy. So call us conservatives if you want, but the thing we want to conserve is democracy. Uh, uh, the, the thing we want to conserve is the constitutional order, uh, the tolerance of intellectual diversity, freedom of speech, freedom of thought. That's what we want to conserve. So if that makes us conservatives, okay. But what we want to conserve is democracy. Uh, that used to be that used to be a, a goal of the left, but the left has become totalitarian. Yeah, and and that that was exactly my question. And like you say, it started to conserve the Western values that we cherish. And and so you write in in management of reality, Francisco. You write that the democrat democratic simulation is ending. That's a very strong statement. And so my question that emerged from that is: Do you think that Israel, right now with the war with Hamas and the potential war of escalating, do you think Israel is the last line for defense for the West and for democracies? And what would happen if if Israel falls? Okay, so uh, thank you for this question. Um, it's a very important question. I think the way to answer it is the the first thing people should do is they should think back to World War Two, right? Because <clears throat> But World War II, it, it's not the only case. I can give you many examples, and if time permits, I will. But uh, it's the recent case. It's the one that people are most familiar with, and it's a very dramatic case. So think back to World War II. Uh, what we saw in World War II is that the people who were hell-bent on murdering the Jewish people in Europe were very bad for all of us. See, this is, this is the thing that really that people really need to understand. The Nazis were very bad for all of us. I'm not Jewish. And people ask me, well, why, would you, why are you expending so much energy defending the Jews? You're not even Jewish. And I'm like, dude, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not this is not an act of charity. I'm, I'm defending myself. This is self-defense. This is Western self-defense. Anti-Semitism is, is a danger to the West. We saw it in World War II. So... The anti-Semites, the people that wanted to kill all of the Jews, what did they do? They, they plunged us into a world war. The entire planet was sucked into their war. The anti-Semites are very bad for us. Very, very bad for us. All of us, whether Jewish or not. So between five and six million Jews were murdered uh, in Europe in Shoah, in, in the Holocaust. But... And of, of, of course, th that's very important. We can't forget that. Never again. I agree with that. But it's also important to remember that more than 64 million non-Jews were also killed in that war. And hundreds of millions of non-Jews were enslaved, lost all of their rights and liberties. Right? Who did that to them? The anti-Semites. My God, how, how is it possible that people can't learn this lesson? The anti-Semites are a danger to all of us because anti-Semitism is the tool of totalitarian uh, expansion. That's what anti-Semitism is, and it has been that for a very long time. Very long time. So if you go back in time uh, to the late 19th century, early 20th century, who was killing lots of Jews? The Russian Empire. What was the Russian Empire? It was an autocratic, quasi-totalitarian nightmare. That's what the Russian Empire was. You go further back, who's killing the Jews? The Inquisition. Right? And what, who's running the Inquisition? Anti-Semites. They're, they're organizing a, a mass killings, forced conversions, expulsions of Jews, and they're also oppressing everybody else. All of the Christians were oppressed by by uh, the Inquisition, the Catholics and the Protestants, and before that, the Proto-Protestants. Everybody was oppressed. Anti-Semites are a danger to everyone. The, 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 the modern West was created by a rebellion against the anti-Semitic ruling elites of, of the Western world. That's how the modern world was created. Now, you go further, further, even further back to the Roman Empire, and you find the Roman Empire committing genocide against the ancient Jews, and the Roman Empire was also enslaving everybody you see so this is a pattern this is a pattern uh anti-semit and the roman empire was totalitarian so so it's perfectly consistent perfectly consistent and now we have uh islam uh, the the forces of radical islam uh calling for another genocide uh preparing for another genocide hell-bent on another genocide of the jews 
And what do they want for us? They also want to oppress us. They, the, all of us non-Jews, they, they consider us infidels. Uh, and uh, they, they'll start with the Jews, just like the Nazis started with the Jews. Uh, but that's not where it's going to stop. They're coming for us. So uh, we need to wake up to what's been happening in, in the West. The ruling elites of the West, the power elites of the West, have been importing uh, the most radical Muslims into Europe and into the U.S. Uh, and uh, all of these mosques that have been going up in Europe have been built by the most radical Muslim states, by Qatar and Kuwait, uh, Kuwait, I don't know how to print it, pronounce it, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, even Iran, uh, but Turkey, uh, which has had an Islamist government for a long time now. Um, so all of these mosques have been built by radical uh, uh, Muslim states. Uh, the clerics in those mosques, this is not exactly a secret, have been preaching jihad against the Euro European infidels. Um, so we, our, our, our power elites have been doing the exact opposite of what we should be doing. Our relationship to Islam should be as a refuge for people like Ayan Hirsi Ali. We should be the refuge where uh, people who want to escape the slavery of the Islamic world uh, can come here into the West and, and be uh, protected by us and flourish with us in liberty and democracy. That's what, that's what the relationship of the West to Islam should be, not Western academics and governments apologizing for Islam and allying with Muslim states. No, the relationship should be the kind of relationship uh, that was at least formal uh, between uh, the countries that were trapped behind the Iron Curtain and uh, the Western free world. We were a refuge for, uh, you, you know, this was happening all the time when I was a kid, the, the uh, um, Soviet athletic stars would travel to another country in the, in the West to compete or whatever. And it was very common that one or two or maybe an entire group of them would escape. Would, they would escape their, their jailers and, and defect. We called it defect. They would defect to the West. Uh, and then they would be protected in the West and we wouldn't give them back, right? Uh, to me as a child, that was, that was incredibly powerful. It made me realize that the Soviet Union was a gigantic prison. Uh, so because he, the, the, the most celebrated people in the Soviet Union were trying to get out, the, their star athletes who were treated as heroes inside the Soviet Union, they didn't want to be in there. They wanted to be in, they wanted to be in the United States or in, in, in Western Europe, right? So that's the relationship we should have with with the Islamic world. We should be the refuge for the people who want to escape. Uh, and this is something that Ayan Hirsi Ali, who's been doing a tremendously good job of uh, speaking to Westerners about Islam, right? That's, that's what she's been trying to communicate because she took refuge in the West. Uh, but the West has gotten so bad that Ayan Hirsi Ali had to escape the Netherlands to the United States because radical Islamists were hunting her, her down in the Netherlands. Well, right, because because so many uh, radical Muslims have entered Europe uh, and begun to transform Europe. So that's uh, I think that's the realization people need to need to have. They need to realize that anti-Semites, whether in Nazi form, whether in radical Muslim form, whatever form they take, the anti-Semites are bad for you. How, how can how can how can we not have learned this after World War II? It's it's just incredible. And and uh, the other side of this coin is that the Jews are good for us. There's a reason the anti-Semites in power want to kill the Jews. It's that the Jews invented liberal politics. People don't realize what they're reading when they read the Bible. The, the story of the origin of Jewish law, the, the, the political context of the origin of Jewish law is a slave revolt, a slave revolution. The Israelites were slaves of Pharaoh and they staged the revolt with the help of God and so on, according to the story, right? But the, the, the important context is they were slaves. And once they revolted and escaped Egypt into the Sinai desert, then they received a new law. What is this new law for? Well, this is the law of the escaped slaves. The whole point of the law is to uh, make sure that people will not be oppressed again. 
So, of course, there's very careful, explicit protections uh, for widows and orphans and poor people. Uh, there's a very careful separation of powers. Uh, the priests cannot own land. Uh, uh, they, 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 uh, they, also, the king cannot be a priest uh, and so forth. So they, they separate political from religious power, from economic power. Uh, so to make it harder for people to uh, get oppressed, uh, they created the, the law creates a huge body of, of lawyers, uh, uh, the rabbis who, whose job is to make sure that uh, people's rights are respected. Uh, the, the Jewish movement was moving society towards the total abolition of slavery. They are the original abolitionist movement. There is a category of slavery of, of slave in Jewish law, or it's, it's, it's a bit of a mistranslation uh, because the, the so-called slaves could only be slaves for a period uh, uh, of six years on the, on the sabbatical year. They had to be freed. And even while they were they were really indentured servants, but while they were indentured servants because they were paying maybe a debt or 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 uh, expiating uh, some crime or whatever, uh, they couldn't be mistreated. And any evidence of mistreatment would immediately get them freed. There's there's a law that says if 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 you're missing a tooth because your master uh, uh, mistreated you, automatically you go free. Uh, uh, right? They could they couldn't beat you, and they and they couldn't disrespect you either uh because it, uh, the, another law says that if you if you're a slave and you run away and you take refuge in somebody else's house by law they cannot return you they have to protect you um so uh and then in the talmud the, these laws became even more compassionate so uh the, the, the talmud says that the i i believe this is condition uh it, it says that um Condition 20A, I believe. Uh, I'll, I'll check it, but I believe that's that's where the, where the this quote comes from. Uh, they say uh, the conditions of the slave should be identical to those of the master. So if 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 it, it, you're breaking the law, if the beds, if the slave's bed is inferior to yours, if your slave's bed is inferior, if the slave is eating worse than you are, you're breaking the law. The the, the condition 20A says that the conditions of the slave have to be equal to the master's. Well, with it. Oops. That means they're abolishing slavery. That's what it means, right? So uh, we have been under a process of increasingly effective Jewish influence for 2,500 years in the West. And what the, Jewish, what the Jews have done to the West is absolutely unbelievable. It's incredible. It's a miracle. The Jews started with the worst societies on earth. Greco-Roman societies of antiquity were absolutely the worst societies on the planet. They weren't throwing innocent people to the circus uh, to be eaten by lions for the entertainment of the ruling elite in China. They were doing that in the West. The West was the worst place on earth. It was run by a psychotic ruling class that thought it was fun to watch a, an innocent human being just burst in blood because a lion was digging its jaws into him or her, right? And 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 they thought it was fun to have human beings fight like 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 a cockfight of human beings fighting to the death in front of them and then cheering like animals. That was the psychotic ruling class of the West. Those those are the ruling classes that our corrupt educational system teaches us to admire. We're supposed to admire the Greeks and Romans for their for their political. I don't mind admiring them for the scientific achievements. Those are those are objective. They're they're non-controversial. But they they teach us to admire them also for their political achievements. And they tell us that the Greeks and the Romans invented democracy. Bullshit. These these are the uh, societies that supposedly invented democracy in the Western narrative that people learn in school. And what they're not learning is the true story that. Western democracy is a consequence of the Jew Jewish principle, which then becomes a Judeo-Christian principle, uh, that every individual human being is equally worth in the eyes of God. That principle, that we all have equal worth in the eyes of God, is the essential principle you need to establish a modern democracy. Equality under the law because that's what me, what that's what makes us all voters. It's what means that it, it, it's what makes us all capable of suing each other in the courts uh, uh, and, and so forth. That 
principle, equality under the eyes of God, which is the same thing as equality under the law when this becomes politics, that comes from the Jews. Uh, uh, the Rabbi Hillel the Elder, the most important rabbi in all of history because Hillel the Elder is the origin of all of Jewish jurisprudence. So all of the uh, secondary uh, halakha, the, 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 uh, uh, all of the law that was developed in response to real life situations and changing historical circumstances uh, and specific uh, cer uh, experiences that we, people were having, disputes that needed to be resolved and that required that you derive a, a specific secondary law from the Constitution, which is the Torah. All of that stuff, uh, uh, which is fundamental to uh, Jewish civilization, all of that stuff has its origin in Hillel the Elder, because the, 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 the Mishnah, is, which is the beginning of Jewish ju ju jurisprudence, starts with him. Now, he said, Hillel the Elder said, that all of Jewish civilization is based on the commandment Leviticus 19.18, which states, love your brother as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The entire, this is Hillel, the most important rabbi of all time said, look, our entire system of thought is based on this one commandment. Uh, uh, and everything else is just details about how to apply this commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the essential ingredient for democracy. Because if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, then, of course, everybody should have the vote. Of course, different identities should be tolerated. Of course, we should talk to each other gently and live in peace and try to help each other. And that's what democratic Western peoples have been trying to do uh, ever since the uh, revolutions of 1848 uh, finally uh, defeated the feudal order that had been subjugating us um, for so long, right? So, so it, 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 the future of the West, in my view, the defense of the West, uh, which, which is going on, the, the West is being defended. People should not despair. Don't despair. The West is being defended. We are defending it. The podcast revolution is evidence that the West is being defended and that we, we have a way of talking to each other now, thanks to the new technologies, even though they're trying to censor them. But, but they haven't been terribly effective uh, yet. And we have ways of talking to each other. You and I are doing it right now. Uh, and we are defending the West. And more and more people can join us. Uh, don't despair. There is still time. Uh, but we do have to work together. And, and I believe the future of the West depends on people realizing that the thing that kills the West is anti-Semitism. And uh, because the, it's the tool of totalitarianism. We saw it in World War II recently. It's so clear. It's unbelievable. We're seeing it again with radical Islam. So what people need to realize is that fighting anti-Semitism is the same thing as fighting for yourself. It's the same thing as fighting for the future of the West. It's not a gift to the Jews. You're not doing them a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Once Westerners understand that, once they understand that fighting anti-Semitism is fighting for their own selves, for their families, for their country, for the future of their civilization, then the West will survive. But that's what we need to, that's, that's the message we need to communicate to people.